Mr. Lewis Black, good morning. How are you, my man? Well, it gets better every day, doesn't it? Well, it it it, it does. Uh, well, the weather at least gets better out here every day. Yeah, it's no, good. let's hope so. I'm, you know, I'm not sure anymore. We get this. It's kind of being a little nice today here in uh, New York, but it's been, you know, I'm like I've reached that point where you guys have it worse. It's like you kind of go, really, we're going to go through another two months of this. Do you ever? Where do you live primarily? Is it in New York? Yeah, I can't live on that other coast. I would, I would be, I'd be dead by now. What about? Have you ever thought about going down to Miami or anything? Do you ever get the 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 older you get? And I'm not calling you old, but do you ever get? Uh, I'm 37. I'm already at this point. I go, man. I don't need these winters anymore. I should move someplace warm. Right. Well, except that I lived in. Uh, I lived in California. I had uh, some stuff going on out there during like February, and it was warm. You know, it was like 70, which is really warm in February. <laughs> but it was just the same. Every day was the same. Yeah. Every day, and you started, to, and that started to be just as debilitating as, you know, the gray. You just kind of wake up and really we're doing this again. <laughs> Lewis Black is, uh, as I mentioned, going to be here on uh, March 15th down in, in Akron. The, are those good shows to do at, at like universities? This is this is in a is this considered a university show or, or does it just happen to be at the University of Akron? Well, I mean, I think it, sometimes uh, I'm not sure how this one is, uh, is is been done, but it's usually when it, when it, when it's at a university, it's usually a combination of the university and uh, who's ever promoting it. So, uh, how are those in comparison to just regular gigs that you do? Are the university shows better or worse? Usually? No, no, they're good. They're 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 all kind of similar. I mean, it's nice because there's uh, if, if all goes well and they haven't you know gouged the kids ticket wise, it's uh, it's good because you get a lot more uh, you get a lot more young people in there, which is nice. They you know they have energy and they get it. You, um, what I find interesting about Lewis Black, and maybe it's just perception because maybe people weren't following you early in your career, but it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me like you really had, you're one of these guys that had career success at a much later stage in your life than a lot of other stand up comics. Yeah, I was almost dead. <laughs> no, it's true, I did. I didn't have real success until. I was in my late to really about fifty. Why? That why is really, that? And that was the, only the beginning of it. And why is that? What were you doing prior to the age of fifty? Were you toiling away, trying to make things work, or what? Well, I was in theater. I was writing plays. So I wrote plays until I was forty. And that's not for anybody listening a money maker. <laughs> um, no, it's a. Uh, that's what I did. I was in theater. I had two degrees in theater. I thought I was going to be in theater. I wanted to teach theater, and uh, nobody was really interested. So I moved on. I had success though. We ran a room here that had. Uh, I ran a room here in the city where we did a ton of theater, and we did plays that. Uh, we did the first plays of Aaron Sorkin, the guy who wrote West Wing. Sure, the walking and talking script guy. Yeah, the Alan Ball. We did his stuff. The guy who gave you True Blood. Yeah, we had really uh, great young uh, writers, and uh, you know, and I was kind of a kid when I ran the room, and it was great. So, what happened at the age of forty? You said that from then you 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 wanted, you were doing all the theater stuff until you were about forty. What happened at that age that you decided to uh, sort of spin off? Two things. One is is that I got tired of banging my head against the the. The, the, trying to get stuff done at, at theaters, and uh, and um, and that uh, there was more, there was really uh, more and more interest in me in my stand up, and I thought, you know, uh, I can either make the move to stand up and eat, um, or I could be broke for the rest of my life, and uh, and it was in stand up in a way was a way in which you know basically it allowed me to write and get my writing out there, so. Right. I'd have picked a better performer, but uh, it took a while. But I eventually, uh, I think, got okay at it. Did you, will you say that you were really broke uh, when you were doing theater? I mean, is this just an exaggeration, or you, were you really oh, broke? I mean, no money in the bank. Uh, I mean, I could eat. I could. Uh, I could put a roof on my head. I lived in an apartment that would scare most people. Um, but uh, but I had no money. I had no money. If I needed to see a doctor, I had no money. I, I, I was basically hand to mouth. 
<laughs> what about when you were growing up with uh, your parents? Did you guys have a decent amount of money when you were growing up? Middle class, poor? Middle class. The last of the middle class. The last. When they, <clears throat> excuse me, when they both sides talk about middle class, they don't really know what they're talking about. It's, um, and they really don't. I mean, it's really appalling. I, I was born to the end of the middle class, mm-hmm. whereby um, my both my parents, my father w- worked in the government, the federal government. Oh, what a sin. Um, and then uh, my mother was a substitute teacher. And together they were, put, you know, they were able to put some money aside. And, uh, you know, they had insurance and they... Uh, um, and then the, the uh, we we you know there was like uh, there was after school stuff that I could do. There was recreational programs that I could do. Uh, in the summer, there was a place down the street, and for for the entire summer, from eight in the morning until five at night, I could play softball, golf, whatever. Mm. And it was all middle class kids. It wasn't some rich kids camp. So you don't you, like I saw something on Fox News a while ago and it was, you know, they were talking about this middle class and and and, and the war on the wealthy and they they were highlighting a family that they had a combined income of in the neighborhood, I believe it was about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and they were lamenting the fact that the cost of living where they lived in New Jersey or New York was so high that they weren't really wealthy. You might think they are, but they're not. Um, so, is that what you mean by these people who say that you know, they considered themselves middle class? They were making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. No, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Then, then somebody ought to look at their budgeting. <laughs> Okay, because my parents, you know, in, and my parents who were still alive were able to, uh, uh, what's truly amazing is over that time period, too, um, put up a remarkable amount of money in the bank. Yeah. I mean, it was it was totally a different time. Well, Lewis, one of the things, and I'm a vic- victim of this, I'm not claiming to be holier than thou, but... One of the things in American culture is we are so materialistic. I mean, we're getting a new cell phone every nine months because we've got to have the latest and greatest. We're dropping two, three hundred bucks on that. And people just don't do what your parents did and save money. No, they don't save money. And they and they also um, that it's, it's also there's a uh, what we, you know, what, what drives a lot of what's going on is there's a level of greed that did not exist when I was a child. Do you think that that's true, or do you think that that is... I think it's absolutely true. I think there's no even an argument about it. People have a sense of of greed that I never... It it gets worse every year. You know? Either you help everybody or you don't. And uh, and over the course of my lifetime, it's been, uh, you know, well, we'll help less people. And let's see what they can survive on. I mean, you have an argument about uh, whether we're going to raise the minimum wage to nine bucks, which is eighteen thousand dollars a year, which allows you to live in New York City for less than eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Have you always been, uh, Lewis, sort of a uh, on the more liberal uh, bend of the political spectrum? I don't consider it liberal to believe that um, things can be done in the richest country on earth that allows everybody. Uh, to kind of get to get um, you know uh, some sense of of, of being uh, appreciated and wanted, and I, I just don't think it's liberal. I mean, I just for, I've, I've felt this my entire life. I felt it from the time that I saw. I can tell you exactly when I felt it. I was watching um, uh, the Harvest of Shame, which is a tremendous documentary by Edward R. Murrow, and. Uh, and I'm sitting in my uh, nice little house in the suburbs, in uh, you know the little brick house with the two bedrooms and the whole thing. And uh, um, and he comes on and he shows uh, what it's what the life is like for a migrant worker, the person who uh, picks our food. And it was I'm, my my mind was blown. The people who who basically made it possible for us to eat um, were living literally like animals. I mean, I just thought this is, how is that even possible? How is it even possible? And it's been the way I look at it from, you know, the only time we respond really as a country to to kind of uh, someone else's pain is if it's an emergency. Lewis Black is on with us. He'll be here at uh, in Akron, at the University of Akron, on Friday, March 15th. You, uh, you had two theater degrees. What did your... 
and, and you were making no money before you yeah, found yeah. all the success. What did your parents think of? Because uh, you got a theater degree from Yale, if I'm not mistaken. What did really? your parents think of of your career path? And did they ever say, "Hey, uh, Lewis, this is great, but uh, you, this may not pay the bills"? My mother was. Uh, my father was less. My my father was very. They were both supportive of it, but, but my mother was always saying things like, and she said this, which was un, really talk about, uh, you know, seeing into the future. When I was at the Yale School of Drama, she said, why don't you go over and see if you can get into the health administration program over there, because that's where the money's going to be. <laughs> she said, if you're not going to be a doctor, it's even better. You're not responsible for anything but the money. <laughs> How did you end up on The Daily Show? Um did you? I did. Um, I, did a, uh, I was known here in the city in a, a woman named uh, Liz Winstead, who whose idea the show was. Uh, um, I was one of the first people she wanted on the show because I had a lot of material and nobody had heard it, and uh, she wanted me to come on to do these editorials, which eventually evolved into uh, Black and Back and Black. Yeah, so she's I've been a, on that show eighteen years. That's amazing. She's actually been in the studio with us, yeah, Liz Winstead. Yeah, and uh, uh, eighteen years. I that's almost hard for me to believe that the show has even been on that yeah. long. That's incredible. Yeah, Isn't that extraordinary? You know, a lot of people. I'm sure you're aware of the studies that have been done in, in past years, saying that most of the younger generation gets their news, what you know, quote unquote news, but what they consider hard news, from the Daily Show. How does that make people who work on the show or have worked on the show feel? Um, I mean, basically, uh, we work in kind of they work in kind of a bubble over there in the sense that they're. We're really trying to come up with what's funny. Um, everything else is like uh, gravy. And the, the fact that uh, kids are watching us, I think, is at least they're watching some sense of what the news is. They're getting it from somewhere. <laughs> when, when you do the Rant is Due tour, mm -hmm. um, what are the main things that you are focusing on in this uh, current act that you're doing on tour? Let me just, uh, um, gosh, I've got, uh, there's another phone going up. <laughs> it's right <laughs> on the radio. Um, yeah, we do about, I do about 20 of these. The, uh, the, the Rand is due really is about ADD. And that the, I think that's the true source of our problems is, is that uh, we, the people, just can't focus anymore. And we're giving our, uh, we're giving um, the ADD pills to the wrong people. We're giving them to children, and they don't really have stuff to do, and the adults do. Do you find it alarming that we do medicate our kids? If if a kid acts up in school and they, they go, oh, my God, he's, he has ADD, medicate him and turn him into a zombie. And When I was a kid, that didn't happen at all. It never happened. I'm only 37. We did not. This is completely new, completely foreign. It's and completely crazy. I'm worried about. What the lasting repercussions of that could be 20 years from now, 30 years from now, how are these kids going to turn out? Well, why would you give the best speed ever made <laughs> to children? <laughs> and you don't allow adults to smoke pot. Yeah. It's insanity. Well, Lewis, needs, he's, Lewis is getting up there, and he needs that speed just to keep moving these I days, right? Speed. It takes me 12 days to do my laundry. <laughs> I, I need help focusing. I'm taking statins which apparently get rid of my memory. So not only do I not know what I was focusing on, I don't even remember what it was I was supposed to be focusing on. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Lewis Black going to be in Akron at the University of Akron, uh, E.J. Thomas Hall. It's Friday, March 15th. Lewis, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, uh, have a good time at the show. Good luck with the show. And I'll give the number uh, for people here to purchase tickets here in just well, a second. I really second. appreciate time and uh, it was uh, nice to have an intelligent conversation at this hour well thank you lewis i appreciate it my man thank you have a good one have a good day and i hope it gets warmer soon thanks bye lewis uh, black